you very much for having me here tonight to speak on this very important topic. Um, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm currently presenting from the city of Vancouver on the unceded traditional and ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tewatif people. In my role at the Vancouver Police Department, um, I am the Sergeant in, in the Diversity, Inclusion and Indigenous Relations section. And one of the positions that I hold within that section is the hate crime investigator. So a lot of the statistics and cases that the Vancouver Police Department uh, has been reporting on has been under my purview. A uh, very difficult year, very difficult couple of years in the realm of hate crimes. When I first took the portfolio, it was in 2017, and we were trending at about 100 cases per year. And this year we will surpass, in my opinion, the 300 mark. Uh, we've reported widely on cases going up by almost 100%, and I'll speak in real numbers because they are small numbers. We went from 142 incidents reported in 2019 to 218 in 2020. We continue to see an increase and uh, same period last year, from January to April, we saw 49 incidents and this year we're seeing 92. Um, and what was very concerning during the pandemic was this trend towards violence. We saw an increase in assaults. Uh, we had 27 assaults in 2019 and that went up to 74 in 2020. We also saw what we widely reported on a significant increase on anti-East Asian incidents that went from 12 in 2019 to 98 in 2020. Um, so these, these numbers are concerning. They are a reflection um, in small numbers of what many people in community are uh, experiencing. And we took a position as a police department to be broadcasting this information and to encourage people to report. And we also took a broader definition of what hate crimes are to include those more smaller incidents that could actually lead to much more serious offenses. We know from other significant global uh, events at mosques, synagogues, or other places of importance to cultural communities that there are sometimes smaller incidents, perhaps a suspicious person or mischief or other incidents of concern that could trigger the police to sort of look into the matter and hopefully prevent. We also know that hate crimes in general are, are very underreported crime. Uh, we don't have a lot of statistics here in Canada, but the 2014 General Social Survey conducted by Statistics Canada does give us a good indication in that year, that, that report did ask, um, you know, how many people had experienced a hate crime. This was a victimization survey. We don't do it yearly on hate crime, so we don't have that data, but we do have it from 2014. And at that time, the report was 330,000 hate crimes reported through victimization survey. That same year, um, it was under 1,400 cases that were reported to the police across Canada. So we can infer from that study alone that it is an underreported crime. So we, as a police department, brought in significant mechanisms to encourage reporting. And that started all the way from the 911 call takers case, taking the cases and putting them up onto dispatch and our officers actually investigating and documenting all of them. So I just want to bring this to the table because we know that they're underreported. So if we create mechanisms to increase reporting, we will see the increases that we have seen. That also is a reflection of what's going on in society. And the trends can actually change very quickly depending on local, national and international events. And so as a, as, as a police department, we need to track these things very, very carefully. Now, the intersection with, um, with social media and the internet and the radicalization 
uh, on the internet should be of great concern. Uh, some people refer, refer to that as hyperspace, where uh, the social media space connects with the physical space into very serious incidents. And the mechanisms that we have in law are extremely limited. Uh, Section 13 of the Canadian Char uh, Human Rights Code used to be able to be used, and in fact was used in past on social media type platforms, but that particular section of the Canadian Human Rights Code was repealed in 2014 because of Section 2B of the Charter of Rights. And that Section 2B is the one that bounds our freedom of expression. And that is also the section that is impactful on some of the hate crimes that we investigate. However, I do see a lot of hope in human rights codes, specifically BC human rights codes, and Canadian human rights codes, because I feel that racism, hatred, bias, and prejudice are very well dealt with within that realm. And anything that we can work together in expanding the role of human rights in, in these kinds of domains so that people feel safe in society is of extreme importance. Because the criminal code has such boundaries in what we can actually proceed and we're often uh, faced by that barrier. I also want to sort of kind of mention the idea of social media as being a global phenomenon. So we'll see uh, cases reported to us uh, that's happening on social media, but the person who's actually broadcasting may be in a different country, impacting someone locally. So from an investigative perspective, those are very complex cases uh, to investigate because they, they cross uh, national and transnational boundaries. So I hope that kind of provides some context and I certainly can take some questions. Um, I do want to mention that recently, I would say in the past six months, we have seen a significant increase in the cases that are reported to us uh, that are happening on social media. And we do encourage people to send those uh, to us because we work closely with other sections in the police department, our criminal investigation unit, and also the BC hate crime uh, team on these cases. And so we, we do follow up on every incident that's reported to us. The very, very tricky part about uh, freedom of expression in Canada and section 2B, which is enshrined in our charter, and the charter, you know, 1982, it's been that document since then. It is what constantly changing our laws. And, you know, that charter section does impact human rights as well. Um, so however, which way we craft um, ways to curb expression, it always becomes very complex within the legal domain. It, might be that the Canadian public wants um, some bounding of expression, but as long as that section is there, the judiciary will have an, an obligation to consider every case in relation to previous cases that have been uh, repealed or, you know, actually le legis legislation that's been repealed uh, because of Section 2B and all of those court cases apply moving forward. So it's a very, it's, it's one of the most complex aspects um, of this problem. And specifically with Section 319, um, you know, willful promotion of hatred, uh, those, that section actually has statutory defenses embedded with that section, which makes it even more complex because uh, you have to consider those statutory defenses. Now, uh, Section 319, um, because of those statutory defenses, might not be, uh, 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 you can't pursue them in, in a criminal case, but certainly could pr probably pursue them uh, under BC Human Rights Codes. And we've seen, we've seen examples of that.